चल आओ मेरे साथ आओ मेरे साथ अंतरिक्ष ने पुकारा है अंतरिक्ष ने पुकारा है चल के देखे कैसा दिखता है देश हमारा superb and one last question i know you you have to go to the gallery uh, to watch the uh, the launch of the slv uh, but is, what is the next project that you are working on is there something yeah. that is we are working uh, for to go to the moon uh, as kesan ma'am said she was hoping that we could build a research station where we could do the research uh, researches we could learn things practically apart from the theory part we could learn things practically and the next time we are planning to go to moon amazing and i think it's equally important to get in a word from the teachers because they've also been helping out the students for a long time ma'am how has this experience been for all of you it's been a thrilling experience for all of us and I, the students have already said a lot of things but i would like to add on and would like to tell you all they all these students are having their examination on coming monday throughout these two days throughout the trip in the uh, i mean we came by air so in the flight in the bus in the hotel these girls had been studying i told them to take rest they said no ma'am we have to study because we have exam on monday so they are not saying they will re- reschedule the examination or something so they are so excited this uh, the failure the previous failure has not let them down they have again come up to make this a success it's absolutely this time they are yes. really sure that we are going to have success and victory and we are going to reach moon as well amazing so fingers crossed yes. uh, you know we hope the mission is a huge success and we are possibly looking at the future space scientists of our country here and thank if you. anyone and shilpa thank you for getting us that if anyone thought that young teenage girls are not interested in science or in space let indian girls teach you how it's done shilpa nair will be getting us the latest on that from shri hari kora what a beautiful moment to listen to these young girls when one of them said we'll be soon towards the moon as well we have some more news coming in let's take a look at that So Prime Minister Narendra Modi is set to visit Mumbai today for the launch of uh, the Vande Bharat trains but it's become a huge political showdown and the reason for that is the Congress party is escalating this attack because just ahead of that visit and of course there will be arrangements made a curtain of cloth appears to have been placed in front of chols in Mumbai uh, which uh, is completely covering their house so there are complaints coming in and uh, take a look at this visual on your screen Now there are allegations coming in that these chawls built near the Chhatrapati Maharaj terminus in Mumbai you can see this high wall and there is this full white cloth that has been made on the road congress party is attacking the bjp and the prime minister over this white cloth cover saying and i quote the congress here like every time houses of the poor people have been covered so that emperor's heart would not get upset for seeing the poverty on the ground so these this white sheet of cloth that uh, is being put in Mumbai the allegation that these are there are chawls behind it it's all been covered to make it look beautiful so this has become a huge political showdown ahead of mumbai visit of the prime minister i'm joined on the phone line by my colleague mustafa sheikh for the latest mustafa so that clearly appears to be a long sheet of white cloth what exactly is the congress saying this time that this is not just for decoration but clearly to hide poverty well yes these kind of allegations were also made during uh, the g20 event in mumbai when slums were covered with such white cloths and uh, routinely we have seen when there is a prime minister movement that uh, these things are done whether it's road repair or covering chawls or slum areas with white cloths even uh, prime minister is going to visit uh, marol area in andheri where he is going to inaugurate a arabic university even in marol we have seen a huge work which has taken place be it to roads be it uh painting of the roads or the footpaths and things like that so there is uh, some infrastructure infrastructure dug up which has been given before pm uh, modi's event which the congress is saying is trying uh, an attempt to try and hide the poverty and not do any concrete steps to remove it back to All right Mustafa Sheikh will be tracking all the latest on that as the prime minister said to reach Mumbai so this Mustafa just stay on with me because we want to look at this visual of this white cloth a sh- long sheet uh, that has been put the allegation by the congress is that there are chawls behind it it's covering people's houses but it's not for decoration it's basically to not show poverty what what are we planning uh, uh, what are we hearing about the itinerary and the plans today of the prime minister Mustafa that uh, what time will he reach till when will he be there in the city because there are likely to be of course restrictions in and around the city too 
yes uh, he will be uh, reaching uh, around afternoon from mumbai airport he will be uh, reaching towards ins shikra and from there the cst station where he will be uh, launching the 9th and the 10th vande bharat express one to shirdi and one to solapur from uh, there there are inaugurations of two roads which are also likely to take up and from there he will be leaving towards marol in andheri where the islamic uh, arabic university will be inaugurated belonging to the bora community and interestingly this is uh the second visit in the, in less than a month by prime minister narendra modi which is being said because uh, uh, there are bmc elections which are coming up in mumbai a project uh, are being launched stay on with me this. mustafa stay on with me this has become a huge political showdown joining me now is uh, from trinamool congress mr majid memon he is an advocate uh, also he is now with the tmc uh, mr memon long sheet of cloth is this just for decoration as it appears uh, the congress party says there's definitely this is to cover something else now see in fact in maharashtra today for all practical purposes it is bjp government of course shinde may be heading it but it is the uh, devendra fadnavis and the bjp which is uh, calling the shots now they are trying to conceal from their own boss the honorable prime minister the, uh, about the truth in the city is it uh, desirable one can understand that if some foreign dignitary is coming and we are trying to just cover up you see certain uh, shortcomings in the city then by uh, putting this because i remember uh, in olden days when mrs indira gandhi was uh, ruling the country and the russian authorities when they came here they had to cover up all the areas around the airport to hide the people going to answer call of nature some years ago there were long long debates on that going on but today we are hiding it from ourselves you see on the contrary the chief minister ought to have shown to the prime minister that look here this is the plight of the people here in mumbai if the prime minister is kept in dark by putting curtains on what is happening in actually happening in city and what is the truth uh, real life on the ground then how do you expect prime minister to take curative steps this is something ridiculous why do you think why do you think this white cloth has been put it is correct they have, they have put whatever cover you see they want to hide what is what is existing on the other side of the cover from the prime minister which is uh, i think a very wrong step Okay, so Majid Mehman there is saying that this, you know, again, <clears throat> what's interesting, uh, Mr. Majid Mehman is saying that this looks more like over oh, the BJP government is doing not as much. Remember, it's the Shiv Sena uh, government, so to say. Of course, it's uh, both Shiv Sena and BJP, but it is Eknath Chinde of the Shiv Sena that's leading it. This thing actually looks like basically the BJP. Very interesting, and he's brought in the Indira Gandhi angle as well. Majid Mehman, thank you so much for speaking to India today. So Congress is stepping the ante, but. Uh, uh Majid Memon is also reminding the Congress party of what had happened years ago thank you so much Majid Memon for now time for a quick break but when i return lots more on the other side stay tuned you're watching india today Over three decades, Business Today has delivered news, views, and analysis like no other, chronicling India Inc.'s journey through time. Now, at 31 years, Business Today presents the future. Mission 2047: Road to India at 100, with Indian industry's biggest stalwarts and an exclusive interview with Google CEO Sundar Pichai. Bharadwaj a well known activist is now joining us the pika i believe in fact that the pictures that you have access of this child is what you really shared uh, with the media correct me if i'm wrong what did you really see did you take these pictures by yourself uh, tell us a little more about how this child is doing at this point in time uh, hi sneha good morning thank morning. you so much for bringing this case to light uh, yes these pictures were taken by me um, I, in fact i'm the one who uh gro- grabbed the case to light uh, early in the morning yesterday i got a call from a known of mine in gurgaon 
that he has seen this girl brutally thrashed and if there is anything that I can do to save this girl, uh, I immediately put a tweet out uh, uh, seeking for some rescue organizations that could rescue this child. And I did not know the state she was in. I had only heard on the phone from my known uh, uh, when I did not get any response from any rescue organization or any leads. I reached out to Preeti Bhardwaj Dalal, who is the vice uh, chairperson, state commission for women, who immediately uh, took cognizance of the matter and put me across to the one-stop Sakhi Center in Gurgaon, Ms. Uh, Pinky Malik. Uh, who was then very, very proactive. She immediately alerted the cops. Uh, the girl was rescued within hours uh, from the home where she was working and she was exactly in the same condition. Her entire face, her, there's no no place on her body which is not bruised, Sneha. Uh, I went to the police station. I have personally gone and met this, uh, this child at the hospital. Uh, she's getting treated right now, but she's in a terrible, terrible state. Uh, she's she's rescued and she's safe right now, but uh, I have no words to explain the brutality uh, to which she was being subjected to. And I think this was the extreme, but she was uh, being beaten up every single day, what she told me in the last five months. They did not give her a penny. This is an educated uh, a couple working with corporates in Gurgaon and uh, I really have no words on the insanity that I've seen on this child and how can someone do this to, to, to a, 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 such a young girl. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com. Okay, so I have good news and good news. The good news is that I found one of the best cups of coffee here in Bengaluru. And the other good news is the fact that I'm using ChatGPT and it might replace Google, but it's not going to take away my job on Tech Today anytime soon. That's because I asked it to write the script for the next episode of Tech Today. I've gotten all sorts of weird responses, but we don't script the show. So that's the good news here for ChatGPT. But more importantly, can it replace Google? That's what we want to find out. Here's a Tech Today special. Chat GPT, OpenAI's latest breakthrough has taken the world by a storm. It has over 13 million unique visitors every day and the platform has varied use cases from debugging code to writing recipes. Moreover, people over the internet claim that it's the next big thing and might soon replace Google as the destination for all your questions. So do you also think that? Do you think ChatGPT can actually replace Google when it comes to answering your questions? Moreover, how accurate are the answers given by ChatGPT? Well, if you have all those questions, don't worry because Tech Today is going to give you the answer for them. We asked ChatGPT as well as Google that I have 102 temperature, what do I do? As you can see, Google gives me links to various websites like the Mayo Clinic, the Cleveland Clinic, WebMD, etc. Trying to define my symptoms and trying to point out what answer could be, what the reason behind these symptoms could be and it also specifies a few medicines. ChatGPT on the other hand gives me a varied and a detailed list of things what I should do. It tells me I have to stay hydrated, I have to rest. It tells me a few medicines as well. Moreover, ChatGPT also has a disclaimer that although it's giving me these answers, this cannot be replaced 
or this cannot be a replacement to professional help and this is something I'm not seeing on Google because Google is just giving me links to other websites which might have the answer to my question. Our next question is a little bit interesting. Uh, we tell Google as well as ChatGPT that we have X, Y and Z ingredients. What can we make out of this? What dinner can we make for ourselves? So whereas Google gives us links to various websites or videos where these ingredients have been used in the recipes, ChatGPT gives us specific details and it gives us four recipes where these ingredients, potatoes, onions, flour and salt have been used. So as you can see, ChatGPT is giving us specific answers to all our questions which are tailor-made for us, whereas Google is leading us to various sites where we could probably find the answer to our questions. This is a humanitarian crisis we haven't seen in a long time. What's unfolding in Turkey, Syria and also other neighboring nations. And we have now a ground report also coming in from Turkey. But this special segment will focus on all the updates that we can bring to you. What's been happening right now? According to estimates, over 20,000 people appear to have lost their life. It's complete death and destruction. While re relief and rescue operations are entering into fifth day, multiple earthquakes, remember, had wreaked havoc. And now there are thousands of injured and millions who could be left homeless in one of the deadliest tremors. This dramatic rescue from different parts of the country also, remember, shows the effort of the volunteers who are trying to save lives. It's been more than 72 hours. Time is running out. There's a freezing temperature. It's been raining in some area. Several families had to resort to taking shelter in the car because their home is reduced to dust. Turkey's president, Recep Erdogan, has urged citizens to keep their patience and he's pledged to rebuild shattered towns and cities within one year. There are several uh, uh, Indian Army personnel who are deployed here. So it's a 99-member field hospital team with 12 doctors. And with me is uh, Colonel Yadweer Singh. Colonel Yadweer Singh is the commanding officer uh, of this uh, hospital. Uh, Colonel Singh, uh, what can you tell us uh, about the about the infrastructure that you've been able to set up here? Okay. We came here as a level two facility, approximately 30 bedded hospital. We have all our specialists, uh, sur surgical specialists, medical specialists, orthopedic surgeons, anesthetists, and we can have to set up an intensive care unit also. So uh, we came here basically prepared for this uh, disaster relief. So we are accordingly prepared. We are a 99 member team from 60 Para Field Hospital and Indian Army was quick enough to deploy us in time. So we reached Adana day before yesterday. Overnight we drove down and reached yesterday morning. And over a period of two days we have seen many casualties and uh, most of them are fractures. They have been buried under the uh, rubble for more than three, three days. So they were dehydrated and uh, broken bones and sometimes uh, seriously debilitated. But they have been taken care of and we are at our job. Thank you very much, sir. So if you look around, uh, this is where uh, you have a team of doctors uh, who are on standby uh, uh, to, to look after patients. And uh, if I just show you around the hospital uh, right now, this is where medicines uh, are being stocked up. Uh, especially for, for the uh, senior citizens, children, uh, immediate medicines. That's the reception uh, of the hospital. So any, any patient who comes in, any of the emergency vehicles, they bring in the patients here. Um, uh, this actually is uh, a school uh, and the school has been converted into a field hospital. So the moment patients are brought in, uh, the recept they, they're treated here. And after that, should they require, there's an X-ray facility, we're told, uh, at, uh, at this place. There's a CD scan facility. But uh, after providing immediate uh, care at the field hospital, if required, they're then referred to a bigger hospital in Adana or in other parts of Turkey. With cameraman Kripal Singh at the Iskarandan Indian Army Field Hospital in Turkey, Gaurav Savant for India Today. 
And India Today's Gaurav Savant is now trying to get as many reports as possible and it's heartbreaking to see what's unfolding. But he's also telling us about, one, the devastation and the hope of survivors too. Here's what Gaurav has sent us. It's a desperate race against time at this location in Hatay as rescue workers grapple uh, the team that you see just behind me with ropes. They actually tied a rope onto a concrete slab and tried to go down because the information is that at least, at least 50 to 100 people may still be trapped in the rubble here. Uh, authorities refuse to confirm that number, but that's the number we are getting from the rescue workers. Some, some sounds, uh, some voices can be heard in this debris. You see a lot of smoke because this building had caught fire um, uh, as, uh, as that earthquake shook this area and this was a multi-storied building with uh, with a large number of apartments by some accounts it's a cluster of buildings uh, together uh, with with over 50 apartments uh, and people were stuck inside just a short while back that image that you see on the right which is extremely heartbreaking uh, one body has been recovered this father was part of the rescue operation because he wanted to help locate his son who was trapped inside the son's mortal remains there next to their car. The father just waiting there. There are other relatives who are still inside and that is why he refuses to go. Uh, the family standing right behind waiting by that uh, rubble in an effort uh, to, to get some information of their loved ones. As you notice, more relatives are now going up. I'll request camera person Kripal Singh uh, to come this side. Uh, see, these are relatives that are going uh, up because they say that their loved ones will respond to their voices. And, and that is why every uh, few minutes, uh, somebody goes up, shouts out a name of their loved one. They come, uh, we'll try and get closer to the rubble, though it's extremely dangerous, but we will try and get closer to get you up to speed. Now, this is where they shout out the name of their relatives and hope that uh, someone will hear something and respond, and that is where rescue effort will start. It's a concrete block. As you can look around, these are several floors that just collapsed. This, as of now, is a race against time to save lives. With cameraman Kripal Singh in Hatay, Turkey, Gaurav Savant for India Today. It's devastation that we haven't seen in a long time in what has unfolded in Turkey and Syria. Over 21,000 people have lost their life as per estimate emerging. Rescue operations are ongoing. There is always a glimmer of hope with those survivors who are being brought out from the cracks. Here are some of the updates. One three-year-old named Ayman was rescued from the rubble of buildings destroyed by the devastating earthquake in Hatay in Turkey. The boy was rescued 83 hours after the quake hit. The quake death toll in Turkey alone has crossed 17,500 people, according to local authorities. A child was rescued from the rubble near Idlib by Syria's White Helmet volunteers. The rescue crew have been working day and night to find some of the survivors or at least any sound that comes from under the wreckage. Syrian relief efforts are complicated because of a conflict that has already partitioned the country and wrecked its infrastructure. Even as rescue operations continue into the fifth day, thousands of earthquake victims are grappling with cold, hunger and hopelessness. Turkish authorities estimate 6,500 buildings almost collapsed, while countless more were damaged in the country. The railroad tracks passing through Turkey's quake epicenter, Kara Marmaras district, were bent like wires on Thursday. This earthquake has been devastating for the country. The footage shows tracks twisted and broken off from the main line. Look at this drone footage. This is the Iskenderun in Turkey. In the province showing cars driving through flooded streets on Thursday, four days after the major earthquake. Sea level has risen in Iskenderun, approximately 200 meters following two earthquakes of magnitude 7.7, 7.6. Tractors have been deployed to carry the residues of mud. With that, it's a wrap on the first up. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself. You can always log on to indiatoday.in for all the latest.
Rishabh Shetty has announced that a prequel to Kantara is in the works. During the event which celebrated the 100 days completion of the first part, he said and we quote, We are very pleased and thankful to the audience who had shown immense love and support to Kantara and taking the journey ahead. With the blessings of Almighty Daiva, the film has successfully completed 100 days and I would like to take this opportunity to announce the prequel of Kantara. What you have seen is actually part 2. Part 1 will come next year. As the research is still progressing, it would be very early to reveal details about the film. Production house Humbale Films took to social media to share a video showing a glimpse of the celebrations and wrote, Celebrating 100 days of timeless tales, cherished memories. Kantara, a souvenir to remember. Kantara is an action thriller that revolves around Bhutakola, a traditional dance for the deity. The film's cast includes Kishore Achyut Kumar, Saptami Gowda and Pramod Shetty in pivotal roles. Jackie Shroff is currently filming for Rajni Khan starer Jailer in Jaisalmer, Rajasthan. A video of Jackie Shroff from the sets has now gone viral on social media. In the clip, he can be seen greeting fans and shaking hands with them. Recently, the makers had even unveiled Jackie's first look poster from the film. Rajni Khan too received a royal welcome earlier when he arrived in Jaisalmer for the jailer shoot. Directed by Nelson Dilip Kumar, the film comprises of a stellar cast including Tamanna Bhatia, Ramya Krishnan and Yogi Babu. Malayalam and Kannada superstars Mohanlal and Shivaraj Kumar will also be seen making special appearances in Jailer. Jailer is expected to roll out in cinemas on April 14. The makers of Selfie have shared the teaser of Kudieni Teri. The song will feature Akshay Kumar and Runal Thakur in a never before seen look. So selfie, selfie, so selfie. The song is sung by Prophecy and Zahran Khan and is recreated by Tanishq Bakshi. Please, Selfie, please. As a fan, we are alive. Directed by Raj Mehta, Selfie is the Hindi remake of Malayalam film Driving Licence, which starred Prithviraj Sukumaran and Siraj Vinyarimud.
Selfie also stars Imran Hashmi, Nusrat Barucha and Diana Penty in pivotal roles. Vijay sir, no normal star. We are all the hearts of the superstar. In the jungle, I say shame. मुझे साल में चार पिक्चरें करनी होती हैं, दो ओटीटी की भी, और 28 एड्स भी हैं सर, 17 शोज, और एक आधा रियलिटी शो भी करता हूँ। The film is all set to release on Feb 24. करोड़ों फैंस की तरह, मेरे और मेरे बेटे का भी सपना है, अपने सुपरस्टार के साथ एक सेल्फी लेने का। Entertainment Bureau, India Today. अगर उन्हें लाइसेंस चाहिए, तो एक आम आदमी की तरह यहाँ आकर सारे टेस्ट देने पड़ेंगे। फैन था ये सर का, अब सेलिब्रिटी बना घूम रहा है। बोलियों बढ़ाइए। फैन था ये सर का, अब सेलिब्रिटी बना घूम रहा है। टीवी का बोलियों बढ़ाइए। अब मैं लर्नर्स टेस्ट, रोड टेस्ट, चाहे तो ब्लड टेस्ट, स्क्रीन टेस्ट, यूरिन टेस्ट, सब देके जाऊंगा और ड्राइविंग लाइसेंस लेके जाऊंगा ओम प्रकाश अग्रवाल जी के हाथों। Try some of the puri sabzi. This is going to be my political breakfast. How many seats are you out of 60? I always say about 50. The mood of Tripura is against the BJP. And what do you want to see? There is no democracy at all. Padoop has decided to give me extra sticky rice. PK Chai Tripura Wali. Great Indian tradition. Powered by QO, European Bath Lounges, Let Time Wait, LIC, Har Pal Aapke Saath, Samsung Galaxy S23 Series. Good morning and welcome to India's, India Today's Burning Question. I'm Pooja Shali. Let's begin first with the headlines and take you through all the big stories of the day. All right, so it's the big day today. India is eyeing space. All eyes will be on Sri Harikota for the big launch of the SSLV D2 launch. Isro's second attempt. This will be to launch the next-gen rocket in the next 15 minutes. Is the city of Nawab all set to turn into a city of business hub? Lucknow is all set to host global business elite. Yogi Adityanath is eyeing an investment of about 23 lakh crore rupees. Prime Minister will be inaugurating this global investment summit for the next two days. Okay. Meanwhile, ahead of Prime Minister's another visit to Mumbai, the choles of the city of his route have been covered with a white long sheet of cloth. The Congress party has targeted uh, Prime Minister and the BJP in Maharashtra saying this is an attempt to hide poverty. Battered Turkey picks up pieces. Over 21,000 people estimated to have lost their life in the deadly earthquake. India Today reports from the quake epicenter. Place against time. This is where they shout out the name of their relatives and hope that uh, someone will hear something and respond and that is where rescue effort will start. This as of now is a race against time to save lives. India upholds its value of Vasudev Kutumbakam. The world is one. Indian soldiers pulling out survivors from debris in ravaged towns of Turkey. NDRF, the Indian Army, doing whatever they can possibly as the time is running out. We're taking you now to the border state of Punjab because it appears that the border security force is, uh, has been able to thwart attempts of a smuggling of arms and ammunition from the border state. We are being told this news is coming from Firozpur that there was an attempted smuggling attempt of arms and drugs by means of drone in the area of uh, Firozpur sector. 
during night, uh, the intervening night of 9th and 10th, the water security force which is uh, deployed there on the international boundary with Pakistan. Uh, sector Ferozpur is that location and there was an intrusion being attempted uh, during a subsequent search by the BSF troops. A packet of consignment dropped by the intruding drone containing 3 kilograms of heroin, one China made pistol cartridges and magazine. Let's quickly bring in Jitendra Singh for the latest on that. Uh, Jitendra, किस तरह का ये कंसाइनमेंट है कैसे बीएसएफ ने पकड़ा और ट्रैक किया इस कंसाइनमेंट को देखिए पाकिस्तान की खुफिया एजेंसी आईएसआई की तरफ से लगातार इंटरनेशनल बॉर्डर पर ऑपरेशन परिंदा चलाया जा रहा है जिसको कि कुछ ही दिनों पहले भारतीय सुरक्षा एजेंसियों ने डिकोड किया है अब जिस तरीके से पाकिस्तान ने कल रात में फिरपुर सेक्टर के एरिया में वहां से ड्रोन के जरिए घुसपैठ किया और उसने उसमें हेरोइन तीन किलो हेरोइन अलावा एक चाइनीज पिस्टल भी उसमें मौजूद था जिसको कि बीएसएफ जो कि अलर्ट है इस समय अलग अलग जगहों पर उसने इस ड्रोन को मार गिराया और उसके बाद तमाम चीजें बरामद की गई हैं पाकिस्तान इस समय लगातार ये कोशिश कर रहा है चाहे वो जम्मू कश्मीर सेक्टर हो या फिर राजस्थान सेक्टर में वहां से भी ट्रक भेजने की कोशिश में जुटा हुआ है हालांकि बी के पास जो इस समय वहाँ पर टीमें मौजूद हैं वो लगातार कोशिश ये कर रही हैं कि जो भी ड्रोन वहाँ से आते हैं उनके खिलाफ कार्रवाई किया जाए और यही वजह है कि एस ने इस ड्रोन को मार गिराया है जिसमें चाइनीज पिस्टल मिला है हीरोइन है इसके अलावा जो दूसरे और हथियार हैं उन तमाम चीजों की छानबीन की जा रही है साथ ही बी के पास एक लैब है जिसमें ये ट्रैकिंग किया जाएगा की कि ये किस तरीके से सीमा के उस पार से और कहां से इसकी ओरिजिन हुई थी इन तमाम चीजों की जानकारी इस वक्त हासिल की जा रही है और कोशिश की जा रही है कि जिन जगहों से ये ड्रोन जो है उड़ करके आया है उसके बारे में विस्तृत जानकारी हासिल किया जाए और उसके बाद ऐसे ट्रैक जो है जो कि अलग अलग जगहों से All eyes will now be in Sri Harikota and keeping fingers crossed because for India's space research organization, it's going to be a big day. In Sri Harikota, there will be the launch of SSLV D2. D2 because this is going to be the second attempt. Remember the partial failure that had taken place previously. So all eyes will today be for the second successful attempt to launch a new mini vehicle SSLV. The launch is taking place in just a short while, so we'll be getting you all the ground updates as well. But after the first launch failure, ISRO then made structural logistic changes and want to ensure success. But it's interesting, remember, that while this is all about science and scientists, faith and devotion also made its way here. Because there were these officials who were visiting Terumala Temple ahead of the SSLV space launch. As per the SSLV D2, Attempt will be to put three satellites into a 450-kilometer circular orbit during the 15-minute flight. And this time, they will be intending to put it into the orbit for the SSLV D2. All right, so we'll, uh, while we take you through some of these images that are coming in, what are some of the features that you must know? This, remember, is ISRO that is going to launch the second edition of the small satellite launch vehicle. SSLV is called the small satellite launch vehicle and uh, it is going to be launched from Shrey Harikota. So you're looking at some of the features that we have uh, compiled for you. This is going to be about, uh, they will want to put three satellites, ISRO's EOS-07, US-based firm Antares Janus-1, and Chennai-based space startup Space Kids Azadi SAT-2 into a 450-kilometer circular orbit during its 15-minute flight. ISRO has revealed some of the statements, but what does this rocket do? The rocket that you're looking at uh, will cater to launching up to 500 kilogram satellites to low-Earth orbits. The rocket provides low-cost access to space. So here, let's dip into the audio as well as an audio-visual is being run by the ISRO. It also offers certain new technology elements considering the functional requirements of its job. Two new solid motors, SS1 and SS3, are now added to ISRO's fleet of solid motors. SS1 motor is the third largest solid booster of ISRO. 
while SS3 motor is a new composite upper stage solid motor. SSLV vehicle is designed as a ready to transfer vehicle with standard interfaces for end-to-end -end industrial production. This flight of SSLV D2 shall demonstrate the design payload capability of the vehicle in low earth orbit as well as multi-orbit launching capability through restart of velocity trimming module. SSLV provides low cost access to space with a flexibility in accommodating multiple satellites. It also offers low turnaround time, launch on demand feasibility, minimal launch infrastructure requirements. Small satellite launch vehicle SSLV is deemed as the next workhorse rocket from ISRO and it is expected to play a major role in the commercial small satellite launch services. अभी अभी आपने एस एस एल वी डी टू का कर्टन रेजर वीडियो देखा आपको प्रमोचक रॉकेट एस एस एल वी डी टू के बारे में कुछ जानकारी उपलब्ध करा देते हैं एस एस वन यू लुकिंग एट एस एस एल वी डी टू अबाउट टू बी लॉन्च दैट्स फ्रॉम द लॉन्च साइड दैर इन श्री हरी कोटा fingers crossed of course everyone will be hoping this remember are it may look like small initiatives but for the space mission for the space research organization and to be making all of this indigenously and putting it into space will be a big step up for india and this takes a lot of effort months sometimes years as you can see scientists waiting for the moment 9:18 am is when we are being told this launch will take place so the first test flight of slv ended in partial failure it was 9th august remember last year the upper stage of the launch vehicle injected the satellite into a highly elliptical unstable orbit there was a shortfall in velocity there was an investigation that was done into the failure about the vibration disturbance for a short duration on the equipment bay all of that was made changes to and what you see right now are some of the scientists officials who must have put in a lot of hard work logistical and structural changes and of course backed by the government and its encouragement and support we have now sslv d2 eos 707 mission and uh, in just a short while another 10 minutes we'll be looking at that uh, full velocity rocket to be pushing into the space from shri harikota it will be intending to this uh, uh, rocket that you're looking at will be injecting eos 07 janus 1 azadi sat2 a quick update to you about these these three uh, satellites that are going to be put in it's very interesting one is isro's eos07 second is us based firm antares is janus1 and then there is a chennai based space startup space kids azadi sat2 uh, some of these children who are involved in making a satellite remember the encouragement is not just for the Let scientists for for young teenagers girls and boys who think they are budding scientists and are literally are indulging in this participation let's go on the ground now india today's shilpa nayar with the latest shilpa you got, got us that uh, heartwarming interaction with the children their teachers and it's incredible to specifically hear it from young girls and their aspirations and dreams what is the situation uh, looking like right now has the area been barricaded uh, up is public being allowed or is this clearly a specific invite event Uh, well, Pooja, exactly ten more, eight more minutes uh, to go for uh, the launch of SSLV, and currently we are at the media center where all journalists are kept. Uh, the students whom we spoke to just a short while back, all of those 750 uh, students who had come, all of them, uh, you know, had worked uh, towards developing the Asadi satellite, which would also be launched by the SSLV. They have been taken to the uh, viewers gallery from where they will be given, uh, 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 you know, a place to see the rock, uh, the the SSLV launch. 
and this of course is a big moment for ISRO and even the country remember uh, the SSLV launch was attempted uh, once but it was a partial success there were some technical glitches that the ISRO had encountered at that point in time and all of those glitches have been rectified this time around is what uh, the scientists at ISRO are telling us uh, and this of course is a big time and this is a, uh, a big uh, moment for the ISRO and it's the first launch in 2023 uh, that the ISRO is doing and there are of course three satellites like you rightly mentioned uh, one of course is the EOS-7 the other one is a US based satellite which is Janus-1 and of course the Asadi satellite which was developed uh, by uh, the young kids here in Chennai and across the world 750 girls were part of this project uh, from across the country and they have developed that particular satellite and this of course uh, you know this SSLV mission uh, it can carry satellites weighing up to 500 kilograms this is meant for mini uh, and uh, you know micro satellites that is of course is the uh, you know, a major advantage. The turnaround time is lesser. Uh, the time, uh, the flight time also, what we're given to understand is only going to be 15 minutes. Uh, so in 15 minutes, this, uh, the satellites will uh, reach main the orbit and be from you. into the uh, orbit. Is what, Shilpa, uh, the you know, I'm very curious to, to see that what we are witnessing from our television screens and of course uh, from the source provided by ISRO. How far are you? EOS 07 is injected at an altitude of well, unfortunately, we're very far from uh, okay. that place. The launch pad is several <laughs> kilometers away from where we are standing because that is the setup here at Satish Dhawan Space Center uh, where the a launch pad is kept kilometers away from the media center. Uh, so I think you have a better view than what I have right now. But yes, of course, once it uh, it, it, it takes off, uh, we'll probably get a better view oh, of the... Uh, tell me uh, about you know, the preparations SLV, by uh, the scientists, the, scientists, the officials, uh, the school children who've been brought in. Why specifically have the school children been invited because many will say they may not understand much about the SSLV D2's technicalities and its launch initiatives. इस प्रमोचक यान में कई नई तरकीन तकनीकों का प्रयोग किया जा रहा है। They believe that you know these are the moments where they can also bring in school children, give them that confidence that they can also be part of this big team, this prestigious team that that works round the clock for the space mission in India. And they of course are trying to encourage students to get into the field of you know of aeroscience, and that of course is the reason why you know they are encouraging more and more kids to come and in fact uh, the fact that they allowed an organization like Space Kids to take part in this entire mission that in itself speaks volumes about how they want to groom the younger generation. We spoke to that younger kids and I hope we can play out the reaction that we've uh, managed to get from them as well. But because they said that, I want you know, to run as many reports that you're also sending to us from Sri Harikota. Uh, Shilpa Nair just spoke a short while ago to some young girl students who are there in right now at ISRO to, to be witnessed Witnessing this firsthand. Let's dip into that. Listen in to this report. Well, it's a big day for uh, the ISRO for the country and uh, I think it's a bigger moment for these young girls because this is girl power in full glory. These are students who are part of the 750 member uh, a girl group, a girls group who uh, developed this particular satellite, the Asadi satellite, which is one among the three satellites that will be injected into the orbit by the SSLV. And the excitement here is palpable. I've been speaking to them since morning. They're all smiles. They're all fully excited. Let's straightly uh, speak to them. Uh, tell us what is Azadi satellite and, you know, how did you manage to take time out of your classes, hectic tuition classes, all of that, and spend time for this project? How did you manage to do that? Our teachers selected us for the Azadi side because earlier we, are, we were interested in science. So we got a chance to do the programming of the Azadi side satellite, and it was a great experience. Although we were able to manage it properly, but as we were interested, so we took time out of it, and then we, we did it. But last time it was a failure, but I guess... Someone said it's a great thing that we fail, we learn, then we fail, we learn again, and then we achieve the success. So today is the day of a success, hope for us. That's, that's, that's something, you know, that's a very nice thing to say, that there are no failures, there are only learnings. Uh, like she rightly said, the last time around when they attempted to put the satellite in the orbit, uh, there were some technical glitches that they had encountered, and the, uh, the, uh, the mission was only a partial success. Uh, this time around, have you made mod modifications? What changes have you made? And she said it was a learning. What exactly was 
use it. Like. So um, we made modifications. Uh, we did some programming changes, a little bit of changes there. And in case in case of you say learning, first we learn. Once you uh, you learn, you fall off, and then you. St- स्टैंड अगेन देन यू अचीव द सक्सेस दैट वॉज द फर्स्ट लर्निंग जीत के जो हारता है वही सबसे ऊपर जाता है दैट वॉज वन ऑफ द सेंग्स दैट माई मम टोल मी वेन आई वेन आई फर्स्ट हार्ट लाइ फेल लाइक फेल वॉज नॉट सक्सेसफुल आई क्राइड आई क्राइड दी होल नाइट माई मम इज जस्ट कंसोलिंग मी एंड शी सेंग नेक्स्ट टाइम यू वुड सक्सीड एंड यू वुड बी अप देयर योर सैटेलाइट विथ योर नेम वुड बी अप इन द स्काई सो डोंट गेट सैड डोंट गेट डिसअपॉइंटेड बिकॉज नेक्स्ट टाइम यू आर गोइंग टू विद द स्टार यू आर गोइंग टू रॉक द All right so what you're looking at remember and the girls you just heard it's incredible these are teenager girls and they are part of the chennai based space startup space kids azadi sct2 that's also going to be launched uh, with the rocket that you're looking at on your screen so just barely any time to go um, less than a minute let's dip in now to this uh, countdown this is the most incredible moment must be nerve wracking for the scientists officials and anyone involved let's dip into that as the countdown begins to sslv d2 launch into the space fingers crossed prayers of a billion people All right so less than 10 seconds to go and the countdown you'll hear in just next 5 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 0 beautiful launch of sslv d2 us 07 on a bright sunny morning you want tracking prajwalan aur safalta purn uthapan sslv d2 promochakyan ka अपने उद्देश्य कक्षा की ओर एस एस एल वी डी टू यू एस सेवन मिशन वी हैव कन्फर्मेशन फ्रॉम द रेंज ऑपरेशन डायरेक्टर ऑफ द नॉर्मल परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ स्टेज वन विच मीन्स क्लोज टू टू थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड किलो न्यूटन थ्रस्ट एटी सेवन टन्स ऑफ सॉलिड प्रोपेलिन बर्नस फोर हंड्रेड फिफ्टीन सेकेंड्स भारत के आजादी के अमृत महोत्सव को दर्शाता भारत का एक और महत्वपूर्ण मिशन दिन के उजाले में दूर तक दिखाई दे रहा है बहुत से दर्शक आंखों देखा अनुभव लेने यहाँ उपस्थित हुए हैं ये अपने आप में अविस्मरणीय अनुभव होता है दे हैव टू ट्रैक सभी के धड़कन तेज द मैनर इन विच it has a hit into the sky and will be entering into the space the so let's listen in to what is being checked every few seconds as the rocket has been propelled into the air jaise jaise yaan upar ja raha hai hum dekh rahe hain iske sabhi tantra samanya nishpadan kar rahe hain aur yaan nirdharit disha ki or apne aap ko nirantrit karta hua aage ja raha hai so this is what the sslv d2 the new rocket will do it will attempt to put three satellites isro's eos07 us based firm antares janus1 and chennai based space startup space kids azadi sa2 into a 450 km circular orbit it will be a 15 minute flight and that is why they want to check every second that is being done that it has to be a direction and a trajectory that this rocket must follow simulation of the flight the separation of ss1 will follow the ignition of second stage kuch kshanon mein ditiya charan ka prajwalan ho pratham charan ko prithak kar diya jayega so i can tell you now that stage 1 has been successfully cleared as the scientists have confirmed when the rocket was propelled द्वितीय चरण का प्रज्वलन शुरू हो चुका है और प्रथम चरण को सफलतापूर्वक पृथक कर दिया गया है द सेकेंड स्टेज ऑफ द रॉकेट हैज कमेंस्ड इट्स ऑपरेशन एंड द फर्स्ट स्टेज हैज बीन सेपरेटेड नॉर्मल बर्न टाइम फॉर एस एस टू इज हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी फोर सेकेंड्स दिस रॉकेट स्टेज विथ कार्बन फाइबर मोटर केस contains 7.7 tons of htpb based solid propellant ushma kavach ko prithak kar diya gaya hai ab hum promotion se 177 second ki duri par aa chuke hain abhi uchai 182 km hai 
तथा सापेक्ष गति दो दशमलव छ किलोमीटर प्रति सेकेंड The closed loop guidance has been initiated and the payload fairing has been separated. The course correction of the launch vehicle takes place through a feedback loop. Second stage loop. performance no. normal. SS2 द्वितीय चरण सामान्य निष्पादन करता हुआ. SS2 चरण का प्रजलन पूर्ण होने के पश्चात 140 सेकेंड का कोस्ट फेस शुरू होगा. इस कोस्ट फेज में बिना किसी प्रज्वलन के प्राप्त संवेग से यान 423 किलोमीटर की ऊंचाई प्राप्त करेगा शार बैंगलो कंटिन्यू टू ट्रैक ट्रिवेंड्रम एंड पोर्ट ब्लेयर स्टेशन टू एक्वायर द डेटा द्वितीय चरण का प्रज्वलन काल समाप्त हो गया है तथा कोस्ट फेज जारी है इंक्लूडिंग कोस्ट फेज ऑफ हंड्रेड थर्टी एट सेकेंड द एस एस टू विल सेपरेट टू हंड्रेड सिक्सटी सेकेंड आफ्टर इट कमेंस इट्स ऑपरेशन During the operation of SS2, the launch vehicle would have gained 423 kilometers altitude and 3.3 kilometers per second relative velocity. वर्तमान में शार बेंगलोर त्रिवेंद्रम तथा पोर्ट ब्लेयर स्थित भूल ट्रैकिंग स्टेशंस यान कर ट्रैकिंग कर हम तक आंकड़े उपलब्ध करा रहे हैं। कोस्टिंग फेज जारी है ईओएस सेवन उग्र मुख्यतः ऐसे नेत भारों का प्रयोग कर रहा है जो कि माइक्रो सैटेलाइट बस से सुसंगत और भावी उपग्रहों के लिए उपयोगी नवीन तकनीकों का प्रदर्शन करेंगे इसमें मिलीमीटर वेव ह्यूमिडिटी साउंडर तथा स्पेक्ट्रम मॉनिटरिंग जैसे पेलोड लगे हुए हैं ई ओ एस सेवन का कुल भार एक सौ है तथा इसका कार्यकाल एक साल का निर्धारित किया गया है कुछ ही क्षणों में द्वितीय चरण को यान से पृथक कर दिया जाएगा तथा तृतीय चरण का प्रज्वलन शुरू होगा स्टेज सेपरेटेड द थर्ड स्टेज एस एस थ्री has commenced its operation ji ha tritiya charan ka prajwalan shuru ho chuka hai ye bhi kareeb 104 second tak chalkar shant ho jayega uske baad coast phase ki shuruaat hogi normal plus 7 minutes tritiya charan ka prajwalan samanya HTPB based solid propellant with a loading of 4.5 tons produces a vacuum thrust of 160 kN. The stage burns for 104 seconds. The this current altitude is 449 km. This current ke ant tak हम 450 किलोमीटर की ऊंचाई तथा 7.24 किलोमीटर प्रति सेकंड की सापेक्ष गति प्राप्त कर चुके होंगे प्लस एट मिनट्स वर्तमान में हम 480 सौ सेकेंड 
आगे आ चुके हैं प्रमोचन से यान की ऊंचाई चार किलोमीटर तथा सापेक्ष गति 6.9 किलोमीटर प्रति सेकेंड तृतीय चरण का प्रज्वलन काल समाप्त हो चुका है तथा कोस्ट फेज जारी है Presently, the third stage has completed its operation, performance normal. but has not yet been separated. It is a coast phase along with the spent stage mass, velocity trimming module, and the satellites. The duration of coast phase is designed according to the mission requirements, considering the altitude to be reached and velocity to be attained at the time of injection. In the meantime, let me tell you about the satellites taking a ride in this mission. The primary satellite for this mission, EOS-07, is a microsatellite weighing 156 kgs, accommodating new technology payloads, millimeter wave humidity sounder, and spectrum monitoring payload. These new technologies, when proven, will be implemented in future operational satellites. The co-passenger satellite Janus-1 from USA is a technology demonstrator smart satellite mission based on Antares software platform. Janus-1 demonstrates modular bus and multi-tenant payloads with onboard edge computing programmable smart EPS, SX band SDR, performance normal. secure TNC and digital twining with SaaS platform. AzadiSat 2 is an ATU nano satellite made by Space Kids India that aims to demonstrate the LoRa and amateur radio communication capabilities, measure radiation levels in space, and demonstrate expandable satellite structure. The Yanka Coast phase Jari hai. यान पूरी तरीके से निर्धारित पथ का अनुकरण करता हुआ अपने उद्देश्य कक्षा की ओर बढ़ रहा है इस यान में आजादी सेट एक क्यूब सेट है जिसका भार 8 के है इसे 75 फेमटो एक्सपेरिमेंट्स के लिए विभिन्न नित भार हैं इन नित भारों को स्पेस किड्स इंडिया द्वारा एकीकृत किया गया है इसमें यूएचएफ वीएचएफ फ्रीक्वेंसी बैंड ट्रांसपोंडर्स लगे हुए हैं जो कि ध्वनि तथा डेटा दोनों के प्रेषण में सक्षम हैं। तृतीय चरण को पृथक कर दिया गया है यह अंतिम तंत्र वेलोसिटी ट्रिमिंग मॉड्यूल या यान को अंतिम अभिवृत्ति तथा गति प्रदान करेगा। The velocity trimming module has ignited and is currently imparting correct orbital parameters for the spacecraft. सर्वप्रथम हम देखेंगे EOS-7 का अंतक्षेपण। Velocity trimming module thrust cut off. Plus 12 minutes. Satellite injection is the next awaited event. अंतक्षेपण की स्थितियां प्राप्त की जा चुकी हैं। कुछ शिक्षणों में EOS-7 का अंतक्षेपण निर्धारित कक्षा में किया जाएगा। The nominal time of 785 seconds past the launch is scheduled for the prime satellite EOS-07 for injection. निर्धारित क्रमानुसार EOS-7 प्रथम अंतक्षेपित होगा, उसके बाद Janus-1, फिर अंत में आजादी Sat-2.
मुख्य उग्र यूएस सेवन का सफलतापूर्वक अंतक्षेपण कर दिया गया है देव वी हैव द कंफर्मेशन ऑफ द प्राइम सेटेलाइट यूएस जीरो सेवन सेपरेटिंग फ्रॉम द लॉन्च व्हीकल As per the mission objectives, two more satellites awaiting their separation. Nay promotion kyan ka pradeshan karta hua SSLV D2. Janus 1, 22.5 kg satellite from USA, next to be separated. Ochit, Abhivritti Prapt Karta Hua Yan. Plus 15 minutes. Janus 1 satellite separated. Janus 1 ke antak shepan ki pushti ki ja chuki hai. Usse safalta purwak uske nirdharit kaksha mein sthapet kiya ja chuka hai. Janus 1 has also been separated and here we have Azadi set to separation also. SSLV D2 EO07 mission accomplished, handing over to mission director. Sabhi ko bhoat shub kaam na hai, mission is tarike se poora hua. SSLV D2 EO07 mission has been fully accomplished. With the successful launch of SSLV D2 EO07 mission, ISRO ha now has a new credible member in its launch vehicle family. Congratulations to Team ISRO. We are signing off from the commentary box. Do continue to join us for the address by Secretary DOA's Chairman ISRO. Shabdan, Namaskar. All right, so we'll be soon cutting across to a statement from the ISRO chairperson as well. But look at this visual on your screen. You're looking at the success. You're looking at the handshakes and greetings and happy tears. But behind this is months and years of hard work, struggle, and putting structural and logistic changes. What you're looking at, just let me help it uh, compile for you before we listen to the chairperson, that uh, ISRO's Earth Observation Satellite EOS-07, Janus-1, belonging to Antares of the United States of America, and Azadi Sat-2, belonging to Space Kiss India and Chennai, have lifted off and have been separated by this rocket from the first launch pad at Srihari Kota. It was a 15-minute flight. Let's listen in now to the ISRO chairperson. Satellite direct. Ravi. So congratulations, the space community of India. So we have a new launch vehicle, small satellite launch vehicle SSLV. In its second attempt today, SSLV D2 has placed the EOS-07 satellite in its intended orbit very accurately. Along with the EOS-07, two more satellites were also placed in the required orbit, Janus-1 by through NSIL and from the Antares and Asad is sat through in space uh, by the, realized by the space kids. So congratulations to all three satellite teams for making uh, the satellites as well as placing in the right orbit and I wish all the very best to the rest of the operations of the satellite for accomplishing their mission goals. Probably all of you are aware that SSLV had its maiden flight SSLV D1 and we had a narrow miss of placing the satellite in the orbit because of a shortfall in velocity and I'm very happy to report that we have analyzed the problems faced in the SSLV D1, identified the corrective actions, implemented in a very 
fast pace, qualified all of those new systems, went through large amount of simulations and studies to ensure that the vehicle will become success this time. I am very happy to see that the really intended model of the vehicle has been executed in reality in flight. So we have also a good news that the orbit achieved by the vehicle today using its very novel, cost-effective and very innovative guidance and navigation system is exceedingly good. We were targeting to put it in a 450 kilometer orbit. We have very, very close apogee and perigee as well as inclination is very, very small, error only. And this, is, this also shows that the, mo the new model of the vehicle navigation system and electronics that we incorporate in SSLV is doing very well. Before I speak further, I would like to introduce very important people who have worked behind the scenes to make this mission success. First and foremost is the mission director of SSLV, Sri S. Vinod, who is a veteran of the PSLV era, who has taken this task of developing this vehicle along with a small team of people. I think they have toiled for the first mission as well as second mission. Now I will hand over to him to talk about the vehicle and also then to uh, the Project Director of the Satellite, EOS 07, Sri Ravichandra Babu, will speak after that. Over to you. Thank you, sir. Let me first say good morning, ISRO, and good morning, India. It's a momentous occasion for us. It's a proud occasion for ISRO that we have now a new launch vehicle to be offered to the launch vehicle community. It all began in 2018, a journey which started in 2018 and reached its intended destination today. The journey which has traversed through its nascent phase of configuration, realization, fabrication, testing, analysis, and finally it even had to overcome the COVID phase it reached the launch pad last year, and we had the maiden flight in August, 7th August. As mentioned by Chairman, we had a small anomaly observed in that, and we couldn't put the satellites in the intended orbit. But detailed analysis further by a number of teams was carried out, and we were able to pinpoint the problem in the system, and we had to overcome that, and I would I would like to say that we overcame that and in the shortest period of on five minutes or five months we have come back. In the shortest period of five months we had to realize five new hardwares, a new separation system. In addition to that we have to make modification to the navigation and the guidance scheme and also carry out a lot of testing to make the system robust. Today we could accomplish with this launch the laid objective of SSLV, that's to have a low cost, low turnaround time satellite which can offer launch on demand. This would not have been possible but for the effort of a number of people. I think the entire ISRO has worked for us, the launch vehicle team in VSSC. The navigation, the navigation team in IASU, the propulsion team in propulsion, liquid propulsion team in LPSC, we had the range team and also the ISTRAC team and also the satellite team jiving with us to realize this happen. I thank all of them for the tremendous support they have offered to us. And of course, we derive our confidence from our review mechanism. There have been a lot of review mechanism and starting from the design review, the configuration review, then the post-flight review, the post-test analysis, all those things, the review mechanism has helped us and I today acknowledge the rigorous review conducted by all the review committee and thank them for the support. I also thank the management which had shown confidence in the relatively new small team to realize this new launch vehicle for ISRO in the shortest period which is possible, especially our chairman, Sri Somnath, who is the main architect of the vehicle and he is considered as the system engineer for this and he has been the main support for us, always helping out 
in in all the conditions and so that we are able to resolve all our issues and come back on track thank you very much sir for the support you have offered to us i would like to thank the satellite team also led by sri ravichandra bahu they also made the satellite in the shortest possible time with the innovative technology and they were able to jive with our launch and i would also thank the confidence shown by enceline in space for assigning two more passenger payload to us in the development phase itself last but not the least i would like to thank the family members of isro for the support and the motivation they give to us which makes us to do things like this and on a personal note i would like to thank my wife smitha who also helped me in my situation of a medical emergency for the past 3 months she has been supporting me mentally and physically so as a last i would say that we would be coming back soon with the next launch of sslv to make isro as well as the nation proud jai hind इसरो ने अंतरिक्ष में गाड़ा है एक और सकते हैं and here a word of appreciation thanks to our scientists at isro this remember is a step up also for india to prove to the world that it does not really always need uh, the foreign space research organizations and some day we'll have perhaps uh, isro right there at par with the nasa and other organizations as well let's bring in shilpa nair for the latest on that shilpa what an incredible moment and you know even if i may not understand all the technicalities of even sslv d2 that sheer uh, applause that came in after stage 1 2 3 and the separation of the satellites that were launched into the orbit that's when you knew that the scientists are celebrating those months and years of hard work and finally that moment they were waiting for well absolutely pooja and like you said we may all not really know the technicalities but that moment when they they announced that yes the mission has been accomplished the, those scenes of the scientists clapping and hugging each other congratulating each other those are very very precious moments a very proud moment for india and look at isro you know consistently upping their game mission after mission uh, even this one the sslb though there was a minor glitch in the last mission they have taken corrective measures and that's what exactly uh, you know the scientists here of course uh, told the media as well uh, they did uh, you know uh, they did uh, face some glitches in the last mission uh, but they went through a detailed review process they made corrections and this time around the mission uh, has exp- exceeded their expectations that is of course what the isro chief has also said and the entire team uh, completely elated and just a short while back when we spoke to the uh, kids who worked on uh, these azadi satellite from space kids india they said yes the last time around they were quite disappointed that uh, the mission was only a partial success but they said they never took it as a failure they took it as a learning and that's precisely what the scientists at isro has also been doing everything is a learning even the last mission was a learning and they and shilpa uh, you know, you know that's what i want to wrap up with the visuals on our screens right now uh, maybe telling us of course about the success of sslv d2 launch it separated these satellites technology demonstrators in the space and of course they will continue to be tracked by our missions but remember amid the three satellites one is of space kids it is the sat the azadi sat and it included school children teenager young girls who were part of this mission that's how dreams are made of so if anyone is thinking why would young indian teenagers be interested in science let young indian teenagers tell you how it's done i'm wrapping up with these visuals as well here's hoping it inspires many more of indians to become scientists in future thank you for watching जैसे सबसे तेज आपकी टैगलाइन है तो इसी तरह से सबसे तेज हमारी सरकार की लाइफ लाइन है थैंक यू मिस्टर पूरी आई थैंक यू फॉर गिविंग मी द चांस टू एड्रेस यू टेररिज्म नाउ अ ग्लोबल इशू द फर्स्ट लेडी पोजीशन इज सो अनयूजुअल नेवर इन माय करियर डिड आई एवर एवर सी दैट लव एंड अफेक्शन इन एनी अदर कंट्री देन वी सो इन इंडिया इन 79 पाकिस्तान हैज बीन रिस्पांसिबल क्रोनिकली फॉर एसोसिएशन विद स्पोंसरशिप ऑफ टेररिस्ट ग्रुप्स
Mr. G, what I do want you to do, since we are at this iconic facility, if you could just tell us what's happening around us, because there's so much movement, you can just give us a rough idea. How do these 55 acres uh, of this facility, how does it operate? And how do you manage to make it efficient mm. um, and truly mm. scale up the volumes and increase mm. business via this facility? Yeah, this is only one factory. As I told you, we have a two factory. Mm -hmm. It is not the, you know, surprising its own. It is only one factory. Yeah. In this factory, we are producing a, a refrigerator about 2 million set per year, only this factory. And then uh, RAC, about 1 million set. And then washing machine front load also, we are producing here almost uh, 6 lakh mm -hmm. quantity and also TV also. So this is one of the, you know, uh, the general production sites of LG India here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now most of them is uh, we are digesting in local domestic markets. So that's why we call, we say, you know, India has a most, most, uh, you know, potential country okay. of global. These are all good things to hear, Mr. G. But lastly, just one thing I want to understand is, when you consider LG's India business mm. and you compare it to markets around the world, mm. uh, how does it rank compared to far more developed markets? Uh, no, no, no. Maybe it will be very surprised if you uh, uh, heard what I'm saying is India is world ranking number two India business size of LG India right after uh, uh, USA market okay globally USA num ranking number one India ranking number two others number three we have very big gap uh, with wow. number three that's why we LG also have a very proud of you know business with India here <laughs> and we hope that you do visit the Pune facility more and come and visit us in the Tech Today studio in Mumbai. Yeah. And maybe we'll show you around and, and you can tell us a little bit more about your gadgets. Why not? Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Waiting for you Thanks so much for joining okay. us on Thank Tech Today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. An estimated 21,000 people have lost their life in Turkey and Syria. Time is running out for the survivors. But amid all this, there's a glimmer of hope as little children have been able to be brought out from those cracks and sometimes with their family members. So what you're looking at are these visuals coming in. A rescue operation is in full measure, but it's been 72 hours after the earthquake. Freezing temperature, raining in some areas, families now taking to cars as their home have been reduced to dust. Turkey's president Recep Erdogan has urged citizens to keep patience and has pledged to rebuild shattered towns and cities within a year. Here, take a look at some of the ground reports. There are several uh, uh, Indian Army personnel who are deployed here. So it's a 99-member field hospital team with 12 doctors. And with me is uh, Colonel Yadweer Singh. Colonel Yadweer Singh is the commanding officer uh, of this uh, hospital. Uh, Colonel Singh, uh, what can you tell us uh, about the about the infrastructure that you've been able to set up here? We came here as a level two facility, approximately 30 bed hospital. We have all our specialists, uh, surgical specialists, medical specialists, orthopedic surgeons, anesthetists, and we can have a set up an intensive care unit also. So uh, we came here basically prepared for this uh, disaster relief. So we are accordingly prepared. We are 99 member team from 60 para field hospital, and Indian Army was quick and to deploy us in time. So we reached Adana day before yesterday. Overnight we drove down and reached yesterday morning. And over a period of two days we have seen many casualties and uh, most of them are fractures. They have been buried under the uh, rubble for more than three, three days. So they were dehydrated and uh, broken bones and sometimes uh, seriously debilitated. But they have been taken care of and we are at our job. Thank you very much, sir. So if you look around, uh, this is where uh, you have a team of doctors uh, who are on standby uh, uh, to to look after patients and uh, if I just show you around the hospital uh, right now this is where medicines uh, are being stocked up uh, especially for for the uh, senior citizens children uh, immediate medicines that's the reception uh, of the hospital so any any patient who comes in any of the emergency vehicles they bring in the patients here um, uh, this actually is uh, a school 
uh, and this school has been converted into a field hospital. So the moment patients are brought in, uh, the recept they, they're treated here, and after that, should they require, there's an X-ray facility. We are told uh, at uh, at this place there's a CT scan facility. But uh, after providing immediate uh, care at the field hospital, if required, they're then referred to a bigger hospital in Adana or in other parts of Turkey. With cameraman Kripal Singh at the Iskarandan Indian Army Field Hospital in Turkey, Gaurav Savant for India Today. The team of Gaurav Savant and Kripal Singh will continue to bring us latest updates coming in from Turkey. Stay tuned to India Today. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourself. world is looking to India now at the helm of G20 to energize global partnership in several critical areas. This reminds me of what Mahatma Gandhi had said. I do believe, and I quote, I do believe that India can make a lasting contribution to the peace and solid progress of the world, unquote. An optimistic beginning to the RBI governor's statement on the first monetary policy after the union budget, soon followed by concerns over the one economic indicator religiously tracked by policymakers at the Reserve Bank of India. Headline inflation has moderated with negative momentum in November and December. We need to see a decisive moderation in inflation. We have to remain unwavering in our commitment to bring down CPI headline inflation. Thus, monetary policy has to be tailored to ensuring a durable disinflation process. A rate hike of 25 basis points is therefore considered as appropriate at the current juncture. According to the RBI, inflation this fiscal is expected at 6.5%, much above the target of 4%. For 2023-24, the central bank has estimated a figure of 5.3%, which still is much higher than the RBI comfort level. This sustained inflation is the big reason RBI has decided to continue with its task of withdrawing excess liquidity from the market. The RBI hiked repo rate by another 25 basis points to a four-and-a-half-year high of 6.5%. The decision steered in part by global outlook. The global economic outlook does not look as grim now as it did a few months ago. Growth prospects in